So welcome back. Three o'clock. Westerly runways. The aircraft switch from overhead to a couple of miles that way. So we've probably got about a minute in between when you hear aircraft crashing over. So I wanted to give you an update on the frame. Now in the Spanish trip I talked about deconstructing it and learning a lot about what worked and what didn't. So over the last week or so I've taken away the old frame and then rebuilt a new one and I'll walk you through some of the components on the new frame, what's in it, what I've changed and you'll get to see it. The other thing I've noticed is my last trip to Spain I went through two GoPros, a GoPro 8 and a GoPro 7. The 8 with the media mod was just not using the external mic and I couldn't figure out why. So I reset absolutely everything on my GoPro 8 and the media mod wasn't working. So I bought a set, another one and now my external mic is now working. I've got a Rode wireless mic. So up until now, I assumed that my dead cat with the mic that was plugged into there was just working and couldn't figure out while I was still getting wind noise, even though I had a dead cat on. So thankfully, as an aircraft goes over, I think I've solved the issue. So I bought a new GoPro 8 to replace one of them that broke. I bought another GoPro 7 and I bought two media mods to allow me to, ex to attach the external mics in. So hopefully this gets rid of any wind noise or anything like that. You probably still hear aircraft and I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do about that. So let's have a look at the frame. So my experience of creating this is it's really difficult to be able to make sure everything is wired up and it looks neat. I have tried, I've had time and effort to try and make sure that everything does look neat. And in the end, I've just given up. Well, what I've made sure I can do here is everything is labeled. So everything is basically loose, connected up at the moment. Everything is labeled. And this is the whole of the Red Arc setup. So this is the Manager 30. This is basically the battery monitoring system. That's my 1000 watt inverter. And that is the Red Arc distribution box. So all of this was hidden away inside the back of the L322. So a couple of things that I've got on here that I'll walk you through, because I don't think you've actually seen this. So these are the Cat5 that goes to uh, the monitor. This goes to the Manager 30. The Manager 30 is also plugged into the shunt. And then the shunt reports back to what the uh, voltage and the way the battery is actually running. So everything is controlled off that Cat5 network, which you can see in the app. And then you see in the Red Vision monitor. My inverter can be turned on and off through the distribution box and that was done through the inverter here and then if you watch that blue cable that goes around and I'll show you where that will connect up to. Uh, I got a water tank and that I'll show you at the back and there is a plug at the bottom you can run up to six water tanks on this thing um, but I got a water tank that is set up at the back it's a 50 litre behind the seat slanted front runner water tank and then I've got um, the sensors already drilled into it. This thing comes with two temperature sensors. So I have one on the fridge, which is down there. And then there's another one here. And the reason why I've got that here is I try and monitor the temperature of all of what's going on here. When I had my old setup, basically everything was hidden away down this side and it was covered. And I was seeing some pretty high temperatures, 28, 30 degrees ambient temperature um, around all of this stuff. When this all goes together, the sides and the top will be open. Not sure about the top at the moment, but the sides definitely will to allow more airflow to keep this a lot more cooler. So I monitor that through that second temperature gauge. And again, the other one will go into the bottom of the fridge. So although this looks a mess, it honestly isn't. And again, everything is labeled up so I know where everything is, where everything goes. And as much as you probably try and do this, apologize for the dog, is you try and zip tie everything together to make it look as neat as it possibly can. I have two distribution blocks, positive, negative. 
and I've got one huge Anderson plug and this goes to the battery. So I've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery and then I just run that connector and so when this comes out, if it has to come out, then I just basically unplug it. I've got to find somewhere to put the compressor and I think that will go down here. This is the airline for the compressor. And then here is unique to this one is my water tank runs through to this. So this is a quick fit connector, pops out. And I got this from the States. So this is actually a front runner with a quick fit connector. Push it in, oh, can't do it with one hand. You get the general idea. These carpets, panels all pop out. So this makes it really light to be able to put it in. This pops out as well. Although I'm gonna to have to figure out at the back to here to screw this one piece down at the back just to make sure when this gets extended that this doesn't move. Now new to this system, I talked about this before, I've had this for a while. This is my Nomad kitchen. Now this thing is a beast, it's pretty heavy. So inside of here, there is a sink. And the reason why that comes out here, is that gives us water. We'll put a, a little hose on the end of here to get uh, water in here. There's a draining board and there's a chopping board. Now, the other cool thing it has is you actually have somewhere to put your stove. And so my jet ball Genesis will fit in here as well, flat, have it all strapped down. So this thing comes out quite a long way. So all the weight on this, it's gonna to have to make sure that this is sitting in this frame. So I'm gonna to have to put a couple of screws in here on the top of the frame to make sure it sits and it doesn't move. It's pretty heavy. I built it so it sits on the bottom and then rests on here. But as you can see, this is a really strong unit. Slides in and out. Now this comes out. It's pretty easy to get this out and I've built this so that I can pop this panel out as well to get underneath it. But as I mentioned before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of screws in here to hold this in place so it doesn't move. Um, that's about the only way I can do this. Now, what I've done here is I put an extra bracing point to allow this to sit flush. And then you can just about see in there is the water pump. And that water pump will run to the line that will come out there from the exit point. Now this tank, if you can imagine, will go flush up against the back of the seat and up against this panel here. And there is the output from the tank. And I'll route that through to the inside of the pump, which is under there. I'm going to get some acrylic panels. These only need to be about three mil, and then that will cover here. I'll take this screw out. Um, but that will cover this, so from the back of the headrest, which will probably come to about here, this will all be covered as well. Now I built a frame that will go in, attach to the top, which this slides in. There's a frame here, it steps down, it goes over on the other side, and this will house everything. You won't see any of that at all, because you imagine this is when you're looking basically head height against the vehicle here, you won't see any of this behind the back here, and this will sit flush. There's a lot of cables behind the back and there is the mess behind the back of there. Anyway, so what do we have on the front here? Now as I mentioned before the problem we had was with the fridge we had to start pulling things off to get to the top of the fridge. So now we've got a flat surface right so this is going to sit in a frame and then you slide this whole thing over and then you won't see any of that behind the back if you can imagine this will be fairly it's probably about head height when you look in so you won't see any of that behind the back so a red vision monitor usbs 12 volt in and out i've got a solar input more usbs and then just different color coded anderson plugs purely for i've got one large cable and then i've got a connector cable that i made up which has got a a gray to red a gray to yellow so i don't mix any of that up so in here, this is shore power. So anytime you go to a campsite, you can plug that in. 
and that will just get plugged straight back into the Manager 30. So this will provide shore power and then I'll be able to just keep charging everything up from the battery. This will go directly in that blue line, goes into the inverter and then that gives me USB, 240 volts and then two plugs. And this is my filler for my water tank. So we decided to put everything this side and keep that free. So storage over here and then any of the devices can sit flush on here when they need to be charged up. So hopefully it should work. I'm quite happy with the way it sort of fit, way I worked it out this time. A few other bits and pieces. I've got an overhead light that I'm going to put on top. It's a strip light held in with a couple of really small mini fist grips and that gives me white LED and amber LED as well. As I mentioned, until this goes in, I'm going to have to run the air lines. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the compressor on the side here with two roof nuts and then run the air line through here. I do have an auxiliary chamber. This is for the ARB controller. This allows you to do, you set a pressure up or down and this will automatically, this controller will inflate or deflate depending on when you're uh, what you want to set it at from an app. I've had it for a while, I never put it in the old one. I had it lying around, I think there's somewhere to go. And again, because this is sitting flush, you won't see this. This will stay open. So everything in here comes out. So that tray, the kitchen, all of these panels come out, they just pop up. The reason why I built it that way is if it needs to come out, I can take everything out quite easily without having to unscrew everything. It doesn't make it heavy to maneuver. So without the runner, without the kitchen, without these panels, it's actually quite light. It's probably no more than about 15 kilos, I guess. And clearly most of the weight at the moment is really around all the electronics. The inverter, the BMS, it's pretty heavy. But that should uh, make it easy to maneuver it in and out of the vehicle. I have done one test fit and it just fits. So it sort of have to tip it up to get it in to make sure this goes where the headrests are on the back. But the dog guard is out, everything inside the back of that vehicle is out now, and I've just got the battery on charge. A few other things, like a lot of things are going on in the world, supply issues with some of this stuff. So if you notice on the bottom, it's black, and up on the sides is silver. I cannot find any of the lipped version in silver at the moment. I've looked, I can't find it, it's sort of unobtainium, so I've had to deconstruct the original one and then chop where I had to uh, put everything together. The only couple of things that I need to do now, just really for strength, is I'm going to drill some holes. These inserts are plastic coating with a metal underneath. I'm just going to put some self tappers in here just to keep this rigid so it doesn't move around. But I never had any problems with the old one moving and I really don't think I'll have any problems with this one. This one's pretty sturdy. In fact, this is probably better built than the first one that I did. Um, and I probably put all this together in a day. Um, it's quite easy to do. You just have to sort of think one step ahead. And I have, there are a couple of mistakes on it. I'm not going to show you where they are. Um, but unless you really look, you're not going to see it. But that's fine. I'm not sure if there'll be a version 3. But version 2, pretty happy with it at the moment. But as I mentioned before, many times, you go away, you try something out, you come back, you modify. And this is version 2. Of what I think will be a better version. It's actually um, shorter and narrow, not by a lot, but enough because before around the fridge I had wider spaces front and back and to the side. Um, so I have reduced this to a bare minimum um, to be able to get everything in. Now those of you that have fridge slides, I highly recommend you get some of this. And this is for industrial machinery, it's just cable slides. So you attach the bottom either to the side here with double-sided tape, it screws at the bottom, but as the fridge goes out and then in, it moves with it and it just makes it easy to glide and you don't have to worry about cable management. Um, everything's taken care of with this. Got this on Amazon, it was about 10 quid I think, you can take out some of these loops as well. So this should go in this weekend. I'll put that frame piece in 
and then I've still got some wiring up to do. All the 12 volt 10 amp sockets need to be wired up as well. Um, compressors in, fridge is already connected and the water pump is already connected up as well. Ideally what I need to do is get a get my battery out here and then test everything out. I've not tested any of the water, um, water lines to make sure that there's no leaks. I probably should do that before it goes in. So I might pop out the battery, hook it up, test it all up, make sure everything's working with it, not in the vehicle. Because the last thing I want to do is to put all this together and find out there's a problem because it's not going to be easy to work on when it's in the vehicle. So, back to you again soon.